uh-oh, am I out of a job? I'm a traffic lawyer. I stand there in court and I help people with traffic tickets. But can AI, can a robot, can software do this job better? Am I gonna be looking for a new job soon? Let's break it down. So you may have seen some articles that are all over the internet about this company called Do Not Pay. They're an AI company that is going to, let me quote for you, listen to court arguments and formulate responses for the defendant. The AI lawyer tells the defendant what to say in real time through headphones. So basically, it's going to get people out of traffic tickets by first listening to what goes on in court and then telling the person what to say to the judge or to the prosecutor. Now, let's break this down, right? This is crazy, right? Is this going to put me out of a job? I mean, I handle thousands of traffic tickets and criminal cases every year. Is a, a robot lawyer going to replace me? I'm really skeptical, right? This application of the AI feels really, really like a gimmick to me. I just cannot imagine this working, and I'm going to tell you five reasons why. So the one problem I see right off the bat is, is the application, like the mode of delivering this information through the phone. Obviously, our phones are with us everywhere we go. Obviously, having AI on your phone is amazing, but there's a real problem with doing that in the courthouse, and that is that you're oftentimes not allowed to bring your phone into the courthouse. Like literally there's a security checkpoint, a metal detector that you go through and you are not allowed to bring a phone into many, many courthouses. So that ends the conversation right there. Like that's not going to go any further. But in the places that you are allowed to bring your phone in, um, you could bring in headphones certainly as well, but using them will be very difficult in court. At least where I practice, there is a sheriff standing there watching people. You're not allowed to be on your phone in court. You can have it in your pocket on silent, but you're not allowed to use it, right? So maybe you can still listen that way, but you know, it's how it gets difficult. And then it's even worse when you, you, know, you think you're gonna have a, a, an earbud in uh, and be able to approach the judge. I don't know any judge in the world that's going to allow you to do that. You can't wear a hat in court, you can't chew gum, there's no way that they're gonna let you have an earbud in. Right? A judge is going to be thinking that you know, you're listening to music while you're you know, having this, this court hearing. Take that out, buddy. Sit, sit back down. I can hear every judge in the world saying that, right? Or even worse is judges become aware of this uh, and then even more so they're going to tell you to take that thing out because not because they don't want you to have a defense, but because they don't want some third party being introduced into the hearing, right? One that's unverifiable, one that's sort of off the record when everything in court is supposed to be on the record. And so I just see the actual practical application of this um, being very, very difficult through phones and earbuds in person in court. All right, so then the next question is, well, what about Zoom? Obviously, in many places across the country, there is now Zoom court thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic. And I think that that Zoom court is here to stay. Now, this is an application where AI might be helpful, right? Obviously, they, AI can plug into Zoom cord or your phone or an earbud there and listen, and not only listen, but also then see what's going on in court. And it's totally conceivable that the AI could be that good to pick up that information. However, once again, I think it's a ways off, right? Like, right now, as court exists, there is so much stuff that occurs behind the scenes in Zoom chat, uh, you know, in, in places where we practice, we're texting and emailing with the prosecutor oftentimes prior to court in real time, um, trying to sort out a case. Those are things that are, are, are rather difficult for AI to do at this point. And so there's a lot here. Other times there's people in court and on Zoom, right? And so it's hard to hear some people in court and the prosecutor and judge might be talking to each other and you know, AI is gonna have to pick that up. It can be very, very difficult, again, it's amazing and it may work in the future, but the real time practical application of this is difficult. All right, reading from this article a little bit more says that uh, this company in the past has helped people um, secure refunds for in flight Wi Fi that didn't work. Um, they have also lowered people's bills and disputed parking tickets. That's amazing. Like, I love that, that AI is helping people save money and, and right these wrongs, these sort of consumer, um, you know, problems and, and helping them out. It's awesome. And I hope that continues. However, big pause on this because what we just talked about was called transactional law, right? Transactions, filling out a form, filing a complaint, right? And sending that and submitting it. 
that appears to be something that AI is very good at. But litigation, right, that's a part of the law that is real time, in person, thinking on your feet, responding immediately, um, listening to, to feedback and, and then formulating a response. That is totally different than filling out a form or an application, right? And I think AI will get there. Like if you're a fan of, of chat GPT like I am, you'll see that that is almost like real-time communication and it is amazing and it is accurate. So I think it's gonna get there, but it's a pretty difficult thing to make a jump from transactional law to litigation um, without a whole bunch of problems in between. Another issue I see with this sort of uh, phone and earbud thing is that a lot of a traffic ticket or a criminal case uh, is dependent upon the evidence, right? That is things like, what does the actual ticket say, right? What is the person's driving background? Their videos or a police report, right? That all will be reviewed prior to this and then used in court to your advantage. So in order to give someone proper representation, those things need to be taken into account by the AI. And of course it's possible, right, that it can read and scan a traffic ticket or an image of a police report or something like that. It can watch video, I'm sure, and determine locations, you know, and intersections on the road. Those things are all possible, but my point is those things need to be taken into account in order to provide proper representation. And my fifth and perhaps most important point is about the emotions that are involved in uh, traffic or criminal defense. I can tell you from experience that in order to represent a client effectively, a lawyer needs to convey the proper emotions. There are officers that testify on the stand, sometimes poorly or smugly, uh, and you want to play on that emotion. Uh, you can see how a prosecutor may get flustered in a trial, and you want to play on that emotion. You can see how a judge may be annoyed or frustrated or leaning in and very interested in, in what's being said. You want to see and recognize and play on that emotion. Failing to do that is failing to provide the defendant proper representation. Uh, people make decisions based off emotions. It's not always logical. I have seen lawyers sing songs in court. I have seen lawyers get down on their knees to make a point. There is a massive amount of emotion that can and often should be conveyed in a trial. Now, many times that's in a more serious criminal case, but I've seen it in traffic tickets as well, and I've seen it used effectively. And I'm just not sure that that's something that AI could or, or perhaps should uh, be able to do quite yet. It's very good at the logic, but not quite as good at the emotions. And at the end of the day, that is gonna play a major role in the judge's decision in your case. So I love the direction that this AI is going, right? Whether it's self-driving cars or medicine and definitely in the legal space as well. I will be looking for ways to introduce AI and, and machine learning into our law firm in the future. I love this uh, aspect, but I think that this application of it, of fighting your traffic ticket in court, has a long ways to go before I would allow it to represent me in front of the judge.